Hey guys, it's Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. Got a classic for you today. We're gonna to do the live acoustic version of Love of My Life by Queen. So this is obviously originally, uh, you know, it's like a Freddie Mercury uh, composition and, you know, it's mostly piano and stuff, uh, a bunch of other stuff too on the recording. But live, they usually just made it uh, a duet with him and uh, Brian May just playing acoustic guitar and then, you know, uh, Freddie Mercury singing. So that's the part we're gonna do off, uh, this version's off the Live Killers album. So we're gonna start here with this uh, little intro. We're in standard tuning here. And this intro, you have like an open D string going, and then me playing some simple triad shapes up on top of it. So we start with this D major triad up here, hit a few times, 11th fret on the G string, 10th on the B and the high E. So you hit that open D first, and then... Then open D again, and then just move that shape back two frets here. Makes that a C major triad. And resolve that to this G major triad, which is a 7th fret on the G, 8th fret on the B, and 7th fret on the high E. All right, from there, open D again. Take that down to the F triad by just moving that chord down two frets. Back to the G. And then back down to the F. And then there's a open D and then a harmonic at the open D string at the 12th fret. So that's why Freddie Mercury's doing his kind of, uh, just kind of talking to the crowd at the beginning. So all together. And then the actual guitar part starts. So the intro that I played uh, at the beginning of the video, uh, the first phrase is this. All right, so that's built first around a D chord. Now, when you see Brian May play this, he has a thumb that is about that long. So I don't, so I'm not gonna be able to play it with the same fingers that he does. I mean, he literally takes this B chord, the B minor chord, reaches over and bars the fifth string with his thumb. And um, that's an impossible task for me. So I'm gonna play it um, as a normal human would. And so we're gonna start here. So you, if, if you see this on video or whatever, a live version, you're gonna see it that he's, he's using different fingerings. But um, uh, I think for the average hands, <laughs> this way it's gonna be a little bit easier. Same notes though, so don't worry about it. All right, so we're gonna have this. So it starts with a D, open D string with the third fret on the B string as well. Now what you want to do is go ahead and hold the second fret there on the G as well. So pick the open D and the B, then you play second fret on the B, back to the three, to the second fret on the high E string, and you want to hold that one for a, a full beat. So we have this. So it makes a full D major chord there. Then we're just going to pick a cross like this, the G string, the B, and then you're gonna reach over with your pinky and grab the fourth fret of the A string. Now here, we're gonna grab the B minor. So this is gonna be, this is where he was wrapping around, which I can't do. So we're uh, second fret on the A string, third fret on the B string. And once again, that same melody goes down to the second fret and back to three, and back to the, the high E string, second fret. So same melody. And then we're gonna end that measure by four on the D, three on the B. So all together. Then 
Then we're gonna take it to an E minor chord. Now at first it just starts out with an e, as an E minor. You strum it like that, and then we're just with your thumb across. And then you pick the thumb on the D, then the open high E string. You do that twice. So like this. Then you're gonna make it an E minor seventh chord by holding the third fret on the B string. Pick that and back with the second fret on the D with your thumb. And then we have this figure which happens a lot in the song. Which is just starting here. It's just a simple way of doing it. It's just this use your third finger there, the second fret on the D, and the pinky at the uh, second fret of the B string. Now you're going to pick those notes and then. First time you might pick all three together. But he kind of varies it throughout the song. But basically, what the pattern is, is you're picking those two notes and then hitting the open A string. Then you're going to move to stay on the same strings, but we're going to have the third fret on the B and the fourth fret on the D. And then once again, you pick those two notes. I'm just using my index and ring finger to pick them. And then the thumb there on the A. And then we're back to the same shape we played at the second fret. So it's fifth fret on the G and fifth fret on the uh, B string. Play that, then the open A, and then back down to the... All right, now the second half of this intro is uh, he doesn't pause as much on the notes, but it's still built around the same chords, except at this little transition part. So it... All right, so that little transition thing, if you heard at the end, that's played a lot on the song as well, too. Now, I'm gonna be playing more full chord shapes here. the full B instead of doing it like this uh, because it's kind of he, he plays the full chord there so we have this um, so that's the same melody that we did before instead of pausing though there on the two here we're gonna hit three twice on the B string so he just makes the melody a little bit more active so it's pretty much the same thing then take it to a B minor full Bar. Now that B minor, bar the second fret, fourth on the D and G, third on the B. But still gonna keep that same melody going that we had before. So you gotta pick up that middle finger, then the open A and the open G, and that takes us to the transition chords. So we have this. Uh, now I would say, especially when you hear this part, obviously this doesn't sound like the album because he's using a 12 string guitar. So you're hearing a lot of the notes when I play this note, the B, you're hearing that on top. And um, if you have a 12 string guitar, that string also is doubled with an octave higher string right beside it. So that's what you're hearing there, but he's not reaching up and grabbing that note. It's part, if you have a 12 string, this will sound like the album. But if you have a six string, it still sounds great. And that's all I have. So that's what I'm using. So we have this. So that is third fret on the low E, fourth on the G, and third on the B. So you're going to pick the low E and the G together. And then B, open E, back to the B string. Let's play this. Then take it down to the, um, it's just a second fret on the low E and the, B, and the G together. And then the third fret on the B. You can play that with your pinky or third finger, it doesn't matter. Three on the B, open high E string, back to that three. So we have this. So that phrase real slow. Then just go to a straight E major chord. Then hit the low E, and then th these intervals, these thirds going up the string, he just sw swipes them with his index finger. 
So don't be afraid to do that. So that's a second fret on the G and fourth on the D. And then move it up two frets to the fourth fret. Then move it up to the seventh fret. I like to pick them. Kind of really brings out the notes uh, for me. All right, so then we get to the first verse. Now, when we go through these verses, um, they're all very similar. So instead of kind of beating it down note for note, um, kind of show you the first verse and um, any big alterations to the other verses, but for the most part, you're not gonna have to learn every single verse. Um, he doesn't play it exactly the same way every time anyway, but it is built around these same chords. So it's a, this, the first way he plays the verse is a, a pretty good way that you might wanna do it yourself. So um, here's what the verse sounds like. So you saw that transition part at the very end since you already learned that. So this starts around just an A major chord to an F sharp minor chord. So we're gonna have, you don't have to hold the full A because you need that kind of melody going on. So it's the open A string with the second fret on the B string as well. So I like to just hold the second fret on the D as well. You can hold, you can bar the D and the G string of the second fret with the index finger, just kind of bend it like that. And then you can have the top like that. But uh, you can also just move it and replace that, so it's probably easier. So we have the second fret on the B and the open A to the open B string in the melody to the second fret on the G string in the melody. So, and then just pick the D string with your thumb, back to the G, back to the D. Open high E, and then we're gonna have a little moving bass line, fourth fret of the low E, to an um, F sharp minor chord. Now how they play it like, like, like this. So that's kind of a stretch. Full bar at the second fret, and then play the fourth fret there on the D with the thumb. And then on the fifth fret of the high E and the second fret of the B, you're gonna pick those, back to that fourth fret, then move the pinky down to the fourth fret on the high E, and back down to the fourth fret, and then and back to fifth. So it goes five, four, five, so. Then take it to a B minor chord. You first just strum the chord, And then it's really just random finger picking around it, but you can get technical with it and just go open D string G. But the best way to do it is kind of how he does it. Kind of messes with the middle of the chord, and then goes up to the top strings. Then that same transition riff. Except this one, and this version of this live version, he goes back down to the first fret there for the last one, one on the G and um, two on the D. So we get as opposed to this. All right, and then we're back to the A chord. Now this time he turns the A chord into an A7. So we have, uh, we started the same way we did before. He jumps up and grabs a, a, a voicing real quick of an A7 chord, which is just the fifth fret on the G, uh, it's a G note, it's a fifth fret on the D string, and then a bar on the second fret of the uh, G and the B together. And then, and then you grab a, a standard uh, G, um, A7 chord, which is just open A and open G with the second fret of the D and the B. So, it's a quick little maneuver he does there. Right out of the melody. And then just pick across the D chord. 
And then we got that, bring it back, bring it back, don't take it. Get all that. All right. So it's a when he gets to that, bring it back, bring it back, and that's just the B minor chord to the F sharp minor chord, which is just the full bar of the second, fourth fret on the D and the um, A string, to a G chord. Now this is the G chord. All you need is really the low, it's third fret on the low E and the high E. So we have this, pick that, and then the open G, and then. Open B in the high E string twice. Move it to a D major chord. And we just pick the open D and the top note together and then descend through the chord. So we have this. Then back to the G. And then we go to this D chord, kind of a D power chord. It's open D. 2nd fret of the G, 3rd fret of the B string, and when you do that, pull off, you can do it like that, pull off to the 2nd fret there on the B. Back to the B minor, and then, it's like an E minor 7 chord, but he just has the low E and the top high E a couple times. Down to the 3rd fret of the B string, and to a a major chord and a D. And then he has this little melodic figure. Now that's the seventh fret on the G and the high E, followed by the open D string, then five on the high E, six on the G, followed by the D, then down to four, uh, I'm sorry, uh, three on the high E, four on the G. And then two on the high E and two on the G. And then that same little transition root. All right, then we get to the second verse, which is pretty much the same thing. You're just. He does do that one change. Instead of that little melody, he's just always got the fourth fret on the high E string when he gets to that F sharp minor. And then the B minor. Same kind of stuff we've been doing before. Now on the recording, the vocals actually stop when they get to the bring it back. I mean, the guitar stops, but you can just keep playing what you did in the first verse. Alright, then we get to the third verse, and this is when things change a little bit. Um, this is about the, about the two minute mark, and it sounds like this. So that is the same B minor and the F sharp minor. It's just kind of the one we did before, followed by that G. Kind of a simplified version. So it's just the low E string, third fret, then open D, open G, and back down to the three. Then you'll hear this little melody. Now, that top note, you're going to hear that, but. Obviously, it's a seven string, so that's what you're hearing. So we have the second fret on the high E, third on the B, then the open D there, then three on the high E, five on the B, followed by the open D again, and then five, seven, and then to that, to an F sharp there. So that's F sharp there, uh, second fret there, fourth on the A and the D, fret on the G. 
then to that B minor, just picking across it again like before. And then the same thing on the F minor. And here's where we have a change. I remember it there. So that's up the fifth fret there on the high E string, seven on the B, eight on the G. And then eight on the G and the high E. And then move that seven down to seven on the high E. Picking that with it each time. And then we have a little figure based around E minor. So that's open E, um, second fret there on the D string. And then a little melody line. Three, two, zero on the high E. Open B to the third fret on the B, then the high E. And then to that familiar thing that we looked at earlier in the song. All right, then we have Brian May's interlude section. It's a pretty cool little part. Let me play through it real quick for you, then I'll show you how to play it. So that's got some cool stuff in it. Now what he does is he moves it up to the fifth fret here on the um, A string, and then you're gonna have the seven on the D, seven on the B. So pick the two, the D and the B string together first, then you pick the uh, D string, um, that's the A string there, and then you pick the D string there. So we have this. Then just go between B and D a few times. Then the open, then the A string again. So we basically have this. Then he starts moving around. So from here, we're gonna go to the fourth fret of the um, A string, fifth of the B and the seventh of the D. So you're gonna pick the two outside notes first again, then the seventh fret on the D, and then back up to the chord we just played. Back to the, so just rotate between those two. Rotate between those two chords twice. Then we're gonna move it up to this A minor. That's moving this up to the seventh fret of the A, eighth fret on the B string, hit those together followed by the ninth fret on the uh, D string. Back to the D major chord we started with. And that same. So we have that little descending thing now. And then we're gonna go to the second fret of the A, third fret of the B, followed by the open E. Then you're gonna take an A major chord, but you're gonna add this A on the high E string as well. So it's just, Kind of just pick across that open A with that high fifth fret on the high E string. All right, then we're gonna take it to an A minor seven. Sounds like this. So that's just gonna be an A. If you play an A minor chord, just pick up your third finger and it makes it an A minor seven when you have that open G string in there. Strum across it with your thumb. Then the D string zero two on the high E. And up to that same familiar G chord. Now I'm muting the A string there, but all the other strings are open there. Just the third fret on the low E and the high E. Kind of pick across that chord a little bit. And then we're gonna... So as I was holding that chord, I went back to the first fret there. It's kind of a stretch. First fret on the B string to the open G and D, and then pull off that one to zero. And come up and grab these harmonics across the, at the 12th fret of the D, G, and the B. 
And then we have this little. So that's just sevens. We played something like this earlier. Sevens on the G and the B. Um, it's the G and that high E. With the open D after it. Then five and six. Three and four. But slide that three and four back to the five and six. And then you play the two on the G and the high E. And just pick across them a couple times. And then to that same little turnaround lick. But then he puts a little extension on it. Which is just this A chord here. So we pick the open A and the second fret of the G and the B together. Then the open A and then three on the B, four on the G. All about the open A. Move that up two frets. And then move that up to the eighth fret there. Play them all three together when you get there. And then we're back to the outro section here, which sounds like this. Bring it back, bring it back. Alright, so this is a lot of stuff we've seen before. The B minor to the F sharp minor to the G. B minor, E minor to the A7 and the D. So that's whenever. Here, there, you're just going. So that's it's just the same part. But at the end of it. And grabs this D major that we started the song with. That up there. And then back to the B minor. F sharp minor. You can pick across it a little bit. And then we're going to just go to the E minor, seven. Strum it and pick across it a little bit. And then we have a cool chord to end it with. And here I'm going to try to do the kind of the voicing that he did live because it sounds. Uh, you know, kind of emulate this 12 string sound here. Um, and this one's actually doable. So, bar there the third fret there on the across the top three strings and grab the three there on the um, uh, low E string. And then add the fifth fret there on top with your pinky. So, so it's cool to hit the low E string, the open D, and then the G string together. Just kind of pick across the chord there and then to a D. A little higher voicing of that chord. Seventh fret on the G and the B with a fifth fret on the high E. And then resolve it down to the D. So I didn't want to get too intricate with you, but like I said, whenever it's kind of like a, you're messing around with these little arpeggiation figures and melodies, um, and you want to make it sound like a recording, it can get a little bit detailed. But I hope you guys can do something with this. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.